So today we're talking about why I took this vintage lens and turned it into a cinema lens. So welcome back. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, like this video if you find it useful. And so today we're talking about, again, why I took this vintage Super Takumar 50mm 1.4 and turned it into a cinema lens. So if you've watched videos on this channel before, you know that I'm a big fan of the Super Takumar lenses. I use them not only for shooting film with my Pentax Spotmatic, but I use them on my Fuji X-T4 for both photo and video. Reasons being, it is extremely compact, as you can see. Uh, it gets great results, it's sharp for being a vintage lens, it has a unique look to it, uh, and then also having hard stops and starts makes it great for pulling focus with video and things like that. Uh, and all around, it's just a solid lens to have in your lineup. So some of the downsides of using the Super Takumar lens for video is because it's such a small lens, you have a very tight focus pull, meaning it's not too far between the start and end to nail focus. So it's much more difficult to get your like, pinpoint focus down. So one of the benefits of turning into a cinema lens is now I no longer have such a small, narrow field to nail my focus. Now my focus throw is much bigger, so it's much easier to pinpoint that focus as opposed to with a small little lens like this. So another way to put that, it's similar to using a DSLR camera for video as opposed to a full cinema camera. With a DSLR, you have a small lightweight body, so you're gonna get a lot of camera jitter as you move the camera, whether you're holding it here or moving it around, anything like that, which is why gimbals come in handy. With a bigger camera, such as a cinema camera, this is not a cinema camera, obviously, um, fantastic camera, but not quite cinema quality. With a bigger rig, it's heavier, it's got more weight to it, so it's gonna be much more difficult to get that quick jitter. You're gonna have movement, but it's gonna be much more natural than with a smaller compact body. So that's kind of a way to compare it and uh, help you understand if you're unfamiliar to pulling focus like that. So I was browsing through Thingiverse and I found several different modifications for cinema lenses, uh, one being the Takumar 50mm 1.4. Now this is the seven element, not the eight element. Now, there's a slight difference in size, but there's files for both of those lenses on that project. There's a few other Canon FD lenses, some modern lenses as well, uh, and then a few other different Pentax versions. The 105, there's the 35. So depending on what you're looking for, there's a few different options if you want to print out a cinema housing for your lens. So big differences between a cinema lens and a regular lens really quickly if you're unfamiliar. First of all is of course the wide front element. This is a 95 millimeter thread. There's no thread on this. Uh, there's another aspect of it. You can mount a kind of a lens hood inside of this, which will give you the 95 millimeter thread. Uh, I haven't done that yet just because personally I don't use anything cinema wise for a 95 millimeter thread. My main reasoning for putting this housing on it was to get a better focus pull and also to give it a little more heft and a little more bulk to make it easier to handle and just feel more comfortable when I'm using it for video. Plus the fact that it's 3D printed, it's very easy for me to take this on and off so I can get that compact body back if I want to for traveling or anything like that. Uh, and then if I wanna put this on for a shoot to make it a little bit easier and smoother, I can just slide it right back on, secure it, and I'm good to go. Of course, we already mentioned the focus. Now there's one more aspect about this being a cinema lens that doesn't really apply, and that would be the aperture. Normally, of course, with cinema lenses, your aperture is declicked, meaning you can smoothly transition from your lowest f-stop of maybe 1.8 all the way up to your highest of f22. There is a Helios lens that it already comes like that, and there's a print you can do for that lens, so that would be one to get if you want something completely declicked. There are videos on YouTube of how you can take this Takumar lens, kind of disassemble it some, and remove the little bead, which is how that aperture clicks. Most vintage lenses are set up that way to where it's basically just a bead behind the aperture ring and that's how you get that click in between each stop. It's a little tricky, I don't recommend it unless you know what you're doing, but it's something I may go back and do eventually uh, just to make this a little bit more smoother for video aspects like that is to de-click that aperture and fully turn it into a cinema lens. Now why did I want to do this? Well of course we talked about kind of the pros and cons to turning this into a cinema lens, and some of the purists I'm sure are gonna hate me for screwing this onto such a great lens. Uh, but there are pros and cons to it, and honestly, as long as people are using this vintage glass and using these vintage cameras, I see that as a positive. Uh, but what originally got me interested into this is I saw somewhere online where somebody had completely rehoused a Helios lens, and not just with a 3D printed version. You can send it off to this company, 
and they'll completely take it apart and put it into a full cinema. So they take this Helios lens and they take out all the glass elements and they put it into a brand new cinema housing. So originally that's what got me interested in doing this a long time ago. But of course, sending it off to that company, this cheap $50 lens ends up costing you several thousand dollars. So that kind of deterred me off the bat from that. Uh, then of course, recently we talked about Zack Snyder using the vintage uh, Canon Dream lens with the f9.5 aperture shooting an entire movie wide open he shot the whole movie with that lens and he had all of those lenses rehoused into cinema housings so full metal body constructions built for shooting video so that kind of re-sparked my imagination and curiosity into it and then a friend of mine has some 3d printers and so i've been exploring things that can get printed and this is one of the things that popped up is a cinema housing for several different talking more lenses some vintage FD lenses, some modern lenses for Rokinon, I believe. Uh, there's a few different variations. So I thought it would be interesting to print it out and test it on this lens, see if I actually like it, uh, how it feels, you know, what it's like, all that kind of stuff. I wish it was heavier because part of the reasons of having a cinema lens is the weight and the heaviness of it, of course, preventing that jitters uh, from shooting video. Since this is 3D printed plastic, it's very lightweight and the insides are of course hollow. So there's not a lot of weight when it comes to this. Uh, but nonetheless, I think this is actually kind of nice. It's useful, I like how it feels, even though it is extremely lightweight, I think it is beneficial. Especially when you put a focus pull on the side, I think having that big ring makes it much easier, much smoother. And if you're using it on a client shoot, they might not know it's 3D printed plastic, so you'll just look like you have a really expensive lens on the front of your camera, which is never a bad thing. So if you have some vintage Takumar glass or FD glass, and you're wanting to kind of use it for shooting video, maybe turn it into a cinema lens, uh, I'll leave the links down below on Thingiverse where you can find those files. So if you don't have a 3D printer and maybe you are looking to do something like this, shoot me a message or comment down below. Um, maybe we can work something out with my buddy and make that happen. We'll see. Uh, but that is gonna wrap up this video. If you found this useful, entertaining, insightful, uh, make sure you comment down below, like this video, subscribe if you are not, and I will see you in the next video.